Lesson 32, Science 7. And today, we're going to simulate offspring number one for our mom and dad. I want you to pay careful attention to the process of creating this offspring, because it is this process, this mechanism, that will help us answer our driving question. How can siblings be so alike, and then other siblings so different? Go grab your pencil, your journal slip, your science journal, mom and dad chromosome strips that we need to cut apart, and the other items you see listed, like a Ziploc bag, paper clip, a red and a blue colored pencil, and the visual profile sheet that's on Schoology. All right, here we go. Here's mom, and here are her 46 chromosomes. You can find this chromosome sheet posted on Schoology. If for some reason you can't print this sheet, you'll need to create 46 paper strips using blank computer paper, and then you'll have to write in the chromosome numbers and the genes that are on each chromosome. Now, to tell these chromosomes apart from dad's, you're going to take a red or a pink colored pencil and shade just the chromosome numbers like you see here. This way, we know that these are mom's chromosomes. Pause this screencast and shade all 46 chromosomes. Do that now. Now, I want you to notice that each paper chromosome has its own number, like this, and the genes that are found on this particular chromosome, like right here. Lowercase letters that are hard to tell apart from uppercase letters have a line through them, like you see with this gene, represented by lowercase w. These alleles have a line through them so that you know that they are recessive. Now we need to cut apart all 46 chromosomes for our simulation, so take your scissors and cut out each chromosome. Remember that mom has two of every chromosome, so you need to cut out that second one too. Now keep cutting out every chromosome very carefully all the way to pair 23. Pause this screencast and carefully do your cutting now. If you're all done, I need you to paper clip mom's chromosomes together for just a moment because now it's time to get dad's chromosomes ready. First, let's start by shading all the chromosome numbers in blue. This way we can tell that they're dads. Then we have to work to cut out all 46 chromosomes. Remember, dad's chromosomes show his genes. Lowercase letters have a line through them if they're difficult to tell apart from the uppercase letters. This is especially true for alleles that are being used with the letter C, W, S and U. Those recessive alleles have a line through them. Pause this screencast and cut out all of dad's 46 chromosomes. All right, we're ready to begin the simulation. I want you to find a clear area on your dining room table, the kitchen island, the floor, anywhere you have some space. Start by organizing mom and dad's chromosomes to create a karyotype like you see on the screen. Mom has 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. Order the pairs from one to 23. Now do the same for dads. As you do so, be sure to leave a little space between pairs so that you can tell apart one pair from the next. I printed my chromosomes out on colored paper so that it would be easy for you to see on the screen, but I know that you have yours in white and that you've just color coded them with a colored pencil. Pause this screencast and take time to arrange the chromosomes showing mom's karyotype and dad's karyotype. Okay. Now what I want you to do is turn over each chromosome so that you can't see the genes. This is really important. Just like when we simulated reproduction with Mendel's pea plants, inheritance is random. You should not be able to select any particular chromosome. It's totally random. So go ahead, pause this screencast, and turn over all of your chromosomes. We're now ready to create mom's reproductive cell, her egg cell. 
Remember, her reproductive cell only has half of her chromosomes. This is the cell that will carry her chromosomes so that she can pass them to her child. Here, watch this clip so you know exactly how to create the egg cell. You're now ready to create mom's egg cell. This is her reproductive cell that will pass 23 of her chromosomes on to her offspring. Now this process is random, so what I need you to do is randomly select one chromosome from each pair. Just like this. Randomly select one chromosome from every pairing. And what we're doing right now is we're creating mom's egg cell. So I've done that. Now I'm going to keep randomly selecting. And this process is happening in a mother's ovaries where she creates her egg cells. And now I have 23 chromosomes that represent mom's reproductive or egg cell. Okay, I would suggest putting a tiny paper clip around the 23 chromosomes that you selected for mom's egg cell, just like you see them I have on the screen. You'll need them soon. And the chromosomes that you did not select can go into the Ziploc bag for now. You're not using them. You didn't select them. Now that we have mom's egg cell, let's create dad's reproductive cell, his sperm cell. Here, watch the clip again so you know exactly how to create the sperm. We're now ready to do the same process and create dad's sperm cell. Dad's sperm cell is his reproductive cell that only carries half of his genetic material. So again, randomly choose one chromosome from each pair. Make sure that this process is random and that you're getting one from each pair. Again, these reproductive cells or the sperm cells are made in dad's body in his testes. And only these reproductive cells, these sperm cells, have half the number of chromosomes. So I'm randomly selecting and simulating the process of meiosis, creating this reproductive cell. Now that I have the 23 chromosomes, this represents that's sperm cell. Okay, now that you know what to do, go ahead, pause the screencast and create the sperm cell. Now put a tiny paper clip around the 23 chromosomes that you selected for dad's sperm cell. You'll need them soon. The chromosomes that you did not select can go into the Ziploc bag. You don't need them right now. It's now time to create our first offspring. I'm so excited. When egg and sperm unite, this process is called fertilization. Here, watch. Once the sex cells have been created, 23 chromosomes are in mom's egg cell, 23 of dad's chromosomes are in his sperm cell. The sperm cell will unite with the egg cell in a process called fertilization and a new cell with a full number, a full human number of 46 chromosomes will be created. And this is offspring number one. And this offspring has half of its genetics from mom and half of its genetics from dad. So right now you're going to create the karyotype for offspring number one. And then we'll read the karyotype to see what traits this child inherited. That's right. It's your turn 
to unite the egg and the sperm and create the karyotype for offspring number one. Now, when you unite them and create the karyotype, here's how you do it. As you can see, I'm in the process of creating the offspring's karyotype. All you need to do is match up the chromosome numbers. So this is number 13 from dad, and this is number 13 from mom. And I'm matching them up. There's number 14 from mom and dad, and then 15 from mom and dad, and 16. And I'm creating the offspring's karyotype. There's number 18. 19, 20, 21, we're getting to the exciting part, there's 22, but the last pair of chromosomes, remember, lets us know what the gender is. And so, here's an X chromosome from mom and an X chromosome from dad, so this offspring is a female. And now you can see, that we have, we can read the genes on chromosome one, and we can record this data reading the genes on each chromosome pair for the offspring to see what that offspring is going to look like. Okay, go ahead. Do that now. Create the karyotype for offspring one, and then slowly and carefully record all the gene combinations like I just showed you on your journal slip. Remember, the lowercase letters that are hard to tell apart from the uppercase letters have a line through them. Are you going to create a boy or a girl? It's all chance, so have fun. Go ahead, do this now. I'm dying to see what your offspring looks like. Aren't you? Use the visual profiles reference sheet to help you draw the facial appearance of the offspring. Make sure to draw this first child accurately using the data you collected. Here are some samples from years past. This is what some former students created. You don't need to be a great artist. You just need to incorporate the traits that your offspring inherited accurately. Pause the screencast and draw the offspring on on your journal slip or on a separate piece of paper. It's going to be fun to share out some of these offspring because remember, we're all simulating reproduction with the same two parents. Do you think the offspring you created in this first simulation is going to look exactly the same as the offspring from another classmate? Why or why not? Today, I want you to submit your journal slip. This is because I want to see your data table and the drawing of offspring number one. If you did your drawing on a separate sheet of paper, then upload the photo of the drawing to Schoology. Regardless of how you upload your work, I need to see both the data table and the drawing. Oh, and don't forget to put away your chromosomes neatly because you're going to need them for the next lesson. Don't crinkle them, don't rip them up. We need them. Let them stay nice and neat with a paper clip like you see in the Ziploc bag. Until tomorrow, keep thinking, keep learning, and get ready to create a sibling for this offspring.